Welcome to my video. I've been asked a lot to kind of show you guys how I produce. I'm not claiming to be a professional, even though this is literally my profession. Um, I guess I am a professional. But basically, I'm not claiming that anything I say in this video is correct or how it should be done. It's just how I do it. So I'm affectionately calling this video Music Production for Dummies. It's like a parody of, of those books. You've seen those books. Insert thing that you can do for dummies. I'm not calling you a dummy. I'm calling it this because I am a dummy and this is how I do music production. So have a good time with the video. Bye. just picked this up and I didn't realize that this is the first song that was in it. This is my studio. This is where I sit and this is where I do make songs. Um, my DAW that I use, um, my software is Logic, but I started out on GarageBand, so this is just like an upgrade. It's all laid out very similar and stuff. So I'm just gonna show you about it, uh, if that's okay. <laughs> I'm already out of breath, so I'm gonna go. File, new, and that's, this is how I make a new project. So I'll, I, I wanna make audio for this because I want to record with the microphone. Make sure it's input one because that's where my microphone is plugged into my interface and make sure it's both on my interface which is studio capture. Yes, it looks like we're all good to go. First of all, I'm going to figure out what tempo this is in because you need to record to a click track otherwise nothing will line up. Well, at least I prefer to record to a click tra track. Some people do not. It's up to you really. There's no rules. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Uh, I just search tempo, tap, Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so that's gonna be 82 beats per minute. Uh, excellent, very cool. Now I can put that into my guy. Look, look at it go. Might be a little bit fast, so I'm gonna make it 80. Just a nice round number. Yeah, we are ready to record guitar now. So now I need to make the output, not my speakers, which is this level, and make it instead the, my headphones because if it plays through the speakers while I am also playing the music you'll one be able to hear the uh, metronome which we don't want and two it'll feed back and sound whack you know what I'm saying so if we turn this turn this bad boy down goodbye and turn this up now it, the, it's gonna be in my headphones which I have here Hey, here we are back at this shot. Hello. So I'm happy with that guitar part. Now I'm gonna take it, the input, the output out of my headphones back into the monitors so I can have a look. Also when I listen through, I like to do like a bit of basic mixing, which uh, for guitar, um, every microphone is different really. For mine, which is a Audio Technica 4040, um, this, is, this is what I tend to do for guitars. I wanna start off with a compressor. It makes all the loudest, Volumes quieter, it just makes them all squashed, it makes them more equal. 
look at it, this is the threshold guy. That defines after how many, I remember finding this so hard to explain when I did A-level music tech, but I will try for you. It's the volume in decibels at which the compressor will start working. So the lower down I put it, the, the more of the, the audio is gonna be compressed. And this one, oh for goodness me, I feel like I'm in A level again, I can't do this. I'm not even gonna try and explain what the ratio is. Further to the right is more, further to the left is, le is less. That's all you really need to know. I like to look at it like this. You can also look at it like this when you have the needle bouncing around but I like to see it this way personally. Not too much. If you put too much, it'll end up sounding weird and squashy. Okay, play again, idiot. That seems f fairly okay, that seems good. Typically with compressors, it will end up squashing it so that it, like the overall it sounds quieter. So I, it's sometimes good to use this guy, Makeup Gain, which you can make it louder again after, the, after you've compressed it. And then EQ, after the compressor, you wanna do some E, Equalizer, which is your frequency response and I love it because you can look at it look you can see it You can see where the frequencies are bro. It's so whack and wild. So it's a bit boomy down here So I'm gonna take a bit of this out and you can like you can see where it is right here And in general if there's like oh wow, I don't know what's happening there But what the heck? Okay. Well, there's no frequencies below like a hundred in this recording So it's good to just cut them. You might as well because you there's nothing there Want to brighten it up? Yeah, right there. Now my ears are insanely sensitive, so I tend to hear like little rings in guitars and also in vocals sometimes if I've been listening for too long and I'm going crazy. So I, I want it to do a little notch frequency cut, which is when you take a really tiny guy like this and you get rid of it. You, sm you slam it down there, you like, get hey, get it the heck out of here, man. See, that guy is standing out for me for some reason. I don't know why I'm like this. Okay, next, we're gonna take the takes that we want out of this guy. Okay, let's do it. Uh, so I, I need to stop doing things while explaining. Basically, what I just did here uh, to cut this uh, on my command click, it's a marquee tool, and I just double click it. You can also do that by using scissors, and then you, don't, you just click it once. It does the same thing. I personally prefer marquee because then I also have the option of selecting big guys like this. And, and cutting it like that, but uh, yeah, that's just how I like to do it. You do have it however you want. And then I don't want any of this. Select it, backspace, get the heck out of here. I recently got this plugin, which is incredible. Lots of the time I play the guitar a bit too like rough. I rock and roll, I like to rock out. If you, if you wanna know what I think that I am, I think that I'm just a rock chick. And I like to rock out. And it kinda like clicks, cause I've just like smashed the strings too hard with my nails. I have this plugin, called Isotope RX-7. Has a bunch of different like denoising things. So if you had like some staticky noise in your microphone that you want to cut out, you can do that. If you have some like room hum that you want to cut out of a track, then you can do that. Uh, you can DS as a really good DS, I'm so happy. If you don't know what DSing is, it's when sibilance, your S's and your T's might sound really harsh in a recording because you're so close to the microphone and it just kind of like, stops that being an issue, I guess. Usually for DSing, I don't like the logic built-in DSer, it sounds fake. Um, so I'll like manually go through and select with the marquee tool each S sound and bring it down. But uh, this DSer is really good, so I recommend getting this if you would like to have it. Because of my nails being loud uh, and obnoxious in this, I wanna de-click it, which is gonna stop those from sounding so harsh, you know? It sounds a bit softer and more rounded out. Um, but yeah, I recommend using that if you want to do it. Oh yeah, make sure you save your project a lot. Uh, Cause then if you don't, then you'll lose it for um, obviously. Uh, it's, it's a song I made. Okay, here I stopped playing cause I made a mistake, like a stupid idiot. And so we're gonna cut out the stupid idiot moment so I don't look like an absolute fool and a clown in front of my audience. I need to join these together and make it sound like one coherent clip. Click and drag it down there. There it is. This spike in the sound is the same chord as this spike in the sound. So I, instead of where this one starts, I want this one to start. So you can do it like this. You can like see where it lines up. Yeah. And then you gotta do fade tool. Come on, click and fade it. Otherwise it will sound weird. <laughs> 
would never even know. Okay, I wanna choose a reverb for this, depending on the song, obviously, but I like to do a, a roomy reverb plus a slightly larger reverb. We gotta use a bus for this, which is, I just did here, I added a bus, which is basically the audio gets sent through the bus and then out into, out into the song, basically. Uh, I don't, I'm bad at explaining things, sorry. Basically, if you want to have effects on multiple tracks, you can put, put them all through a bus rather than having to add them individually to each track. And then you can add plugins just the same as your normal audio file, audio track. Um, uh, add a reverb, space designer, classic space designer, love that. My favorite room reverb is realistic room which is right there. This little level here beside the bus is how much you're gonna be sending to this reverb. Don't want it to be too drastic, just a little guy, make it sound a bit fuller. Cool, got, got him. Okay, now I'm gonna add my other bus, bus two. I also recommend you name your buses so it's not just aux one, aux two, whatever. Uh, let's go for maybe a medium guy, maybe a, uh, a plate reverb, a soft plate, that sounds nice. There you go, There's, there are my reverbs. And I'm gonna use these for the other tracks as well so that they blend well together. If they all have different reverbs, it might sound a bit kind of uh, disconnected, but if they all have the same reverb, then it sounds like all the instruments are in the same room together. I wanna to reiterate, there's no rules. You can do whatever you want. You can add all kinds of wacky reverbs. It's up to you, honestly. You can do whatever you want. A lot of the time, I like to double track, and there's two ways to double track. You can either do a real double track, which is where you literally just record yourself playing the thing again and, and put it over, or you can do a fake double track, which you can do by duplicating, I, that's command D, that's how you do that. And then you copy this down and then you move it slightly out of line. And you also need to pan each one opposite ways, left and right. And then it kind of gives it a stereo effect. Just kind of sounds like it's like behind you or something. I don't know how well this is coming through because I'm not recording from my computer. I'm recording from my phone on voice memos. Actually, I probably should start recording from my computer. I can actually do that. I don't know why I'm not doing it. Okay, now I'm doing it. Now I'm doing it. This is with the with the fake double track. You hear how it's in two ears. Uh, this is without. So that's an easier way to double track if you can't be bothered to re-record it. Also, another way to double track if you can't be bothered to re-record it, if you've got something just looping like that, you could just take a different section of it. Since we've got it to a metronome, we can just take a different section and it will line up perfectly great. This four bar section is the same as the this four bar section here. So I'm just gonna put it over the top there. I like that, that sounds good. I like it being double tracked. It's slightly out of time though, which we can actually fix. You click this guy, which is, lets you flex things. Polyphonic is what we want. This shows where all of the peaks are in the audio. Not not like peaks, like like being too loud, but like the 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 pointy bits, you know what I mean. Hello, I'm back and also closer. I realized that I actually couldn't do the double track trick thing with the last bit, because I only had one recording of it. Um, so, so I just re-recorded it. Okay, now I want to do my vocals. I typically will record three set, three separate, <laughs> three separate takes of the whole thing all the way through, and then pick my favorite kind of uh, bits of each one. I find that it's easier for me to sing when I have one earphone off. Also, if you ever see me live, I have one monitor in, one monitor out, because that is what is comfortable for me. Even though I might go deaf in one ear and not in the other. Uh, we'll find out later. Okay, let's see which I prefer. If you're new to EQ, this might look like a lot of things I'm doing, um, but honestly, the best way to learn how to do it is to just do it, just move things around and see what sounds best, and also just make the, the, the gain really high on a certain frequency just to know what that frequency sounds like when you look at this visual. I'm gonna go through and select all my favorites from all of this, and I'll see you after I've done it. Okay, I'm done. This is my finished, like, main vocal track. So just so you know, it's fine if you do have to do a bunch of takes. It's good to be picky, because then that means you care about it. Now I'm gonna record some harmonies. I'm gonna get rid of these guys, don't want them anymore. So I have to listen through and just figure out what they are first. Know how to tell you you're the best. I just don't want you to be gone. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and hit it. Hurry up and come back home. No, wrong. Hurry up and come back home. Thinking about you all day long. And I can't stop looking at my phone. I just don't want you to be alone. Got a message from your friend. And I felt my stomach in my chest. I don't know how to tell you you're the best. I just don't want you to be gone. I want to add a second harmony, third vocal. I want it to start on like the second verse, kind of go. Get my phone, on. got a message from phone, got a message from your friend, and I felt my stomach in my chest. I just know how to tell you you're the best. I just don't want you to be gone. It's kind of high for me. You want to know a trick that I do when it's a bit too high for me and I don't want to strain my voice? You go to make it custom, then you go customize control bar, and then you add virus speed, and then you make it speed and pitch, and then you make it all slower. And stop looking at my phone. I just don't want you to be alone. Makes me sound a bit kind of like a. Like a, like a snail. And then you just sing your harmony over that. Don't put it too far down, because then when you speed it up again, it will sound like Chipmunky. It kind of makes like a nice kind of different tone, I guess. It makes it sound like a different person. I, I quite like it. I quite like it sounding kind of like a child singing. Um, so I've done that a few times. I did that in like Boys Will Be Bugs. I did that to make the little kind of kid voice. But it's helpful if you can't quite reach a harmony that's a bit too high, or same with if it's a bit too low for you. Um, it's just a fun trick that you can do. Know how to tell you you're the best. I just don't want you to be gone. That's much more re reachable for me. Yeah, sounds nice. It's like little baby voices. This song said. Okay, at this point, I've got all the vocals and I've got my guitar, my main instrument. And now I basically just listen through. I can hear in my head what I want to come in at certain points. I want the bass to come in with the second harmony that comes in. And then I want drum a drum beat to come in. Okay, so I'm doing my bass part. This one requires a different input because I'm direct inputting it into the thing. I'm just plugging it straight into my... Uh, into my interface. So it's just gonna be a clean sound straight into here and then I add anything that I want to within my, uh, within Logic. So I'm gonna get my bass, B BRB is my bass, but I also need a, a quarter inch cable. Somehow I've acquired two of this cable. I did not buy two of them. I think I stole one from a festival recently. I'm very sorry. Plug it. And then I'm gonna put this into input two, ne right next to my uh, microphone input. I'm basically just gonna play through the song and see what, what sounds good. Don't want you to be alone. Got a message from your friend And I felt my stomach in my chest I don't know how to tell you you're the best I just don't want you to be gone Yeah, I think I'll just do like a basic um, root notes bass for it Got a message from your friend and I Okay, bass is all done. Uh, now I'm going to pick what preset I want to start on. I quite like modern stack. Depends on the song. I think this will work for this one. To be alone, got a message from your friend, and I felt my stomach in my chest. I don't know how to tell you you're the best. I just don't want you to be gone. Another thing that's good to do is to add an exciter. This will basically add harmonics. Lots of um, things that people might be listening to your music on, like uh, computer speakers or some kinds of headphones might not have such a good low frequency response. And so if your bass is really subby, they, they, it won't show up and they won't be able to hear it. So yeah, it, uh, Exciter will also help them hear the bass if they don't have those frequencies. You choose here which frequencies you want the, it to add harmonics to. So usually like around here, I like to put it.
It just kind of brightens it up and makes it kind of more resonant, I guess. It's had a drum in it. It's had a drums in it. I feel like this would work with some kind of indie sounding kind of, I guess like dead sounding drums. You know what I mean? Where it's like, not like a ksh, it's like a, somebody fell down, what the crap? So for this, I'll make a software instrument. I don't currently have a keyboard, a MIDI keyboard, but you can actually just use your actual keyboard, your computer keyboard. If you go show musical typing. And you can type it out. Usually I'd say, um, if you want there to be real drums in your song, it's always better to actually get a real drum kit and record that if you have access to that. Obviously not everyone does. It can be hard to make electronic drum kits sound like a real drum kit. Although the Logic sounds are actually really pretty good. It's all about um, something called Velocity, which I will show you about in a second. Plus, I gotta pick what, which kit I wanna use. I don't want you to be alone Got a message from your friend Felt my stomach in my chest I don't know how to tell you you're the best I just don't want you to be gone So here, here's my drum beat that I just recorded in. I want to make it all highest velocity possible. And then, I want it all to be in time. I go here, time quantize. 16 note, yeah, that's good. Quantize it and look, see, it snapped into place. Got a message from your friend. Felt my stomach in my chest. So now I'm gonna duplicate this twice. Copy it. Oop, make sure it's in line. This one I'm gonna be just my kick drum, so I get rid of everything else. This one I wanna be just my snare, so I get rid of the kick. And I get rid of the hi hat. And this one I want to just be hi hat, so I get rid of snare and the kick. And now I have them all separated out and I can manipulate each one as much as I please. Okay, the hi-hat is the one that we're gonna do most of velocity editing on. So you just click this guy here, um, which will pull up this. You make it velocity. And this shows the volume of each of these guys. And so obviously when a real person is hitting a hi-hat, they're not gonna hit every single one with the exact same power. So we're gonna try and like imitate that here. So the offbeats might be slightly quieter, so we'll bring it down. And maybe I'll do like a little, little fill kind of guy here. And now so I don't have to edit all of the hi-hat notes here, I can just cut this here and then copy this over. And I'm copying it over rather than looping it here so that I can make some changes while still keeping the velocity editing that I just did. And I can join them together by highlighting them both and pressing J. I actually think the swung doesn't really work. Maybe it doesn't work at all, I'm gonna take that out. I'm just gonna go and make the drum track for the rest of the song, and I'll come back to you and show you that in a second. Okay. Hello, I'm back. Uh, I finished the drum part. Um, I decided that I wanted the uh, toms to be on a separate track because I wanted them to be a bit more bassy um, and I also added some cymbals and also um, it's just generally easier to do drums that are in time with the rest of the track if you put all of these into time. Uh, they were, yeah, they were just a bit out of time. I just fixed those up. Um, using the flex thing that I showed you before. Yeah, so now I've got all of this. I wanna add a shaker. I really like the Logic Loops up here, Loop Browser. They have a whole bunch of instruments you can use. Back when I used to do GarageBand stuff, I used to just have fun and mess around. And what I use it for now is this shaker. It can, you have all these shaker sounds and they will sync up with your tempo that you've put into the project. Hi, sorry, my camera card filled up. I don't don't know where it stopped recording, but I'm making a, sh a shaker. Um, this is another way that you can make drummer tracks um, that will mix with your, the rest of your thing, but you have less control over what the actual rhythm is. You can basically s set up a drummer track to just play a drum beat over the top of your thing. It'd be If you want, you can add in a, a tambourine or like whatever this thing is, kabasa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. Yeah, and basically if you wanted to add any other synths or um, any other instruments, whatever you want, you just have a whole library of stuff here to explore. That's kind of the basics of putting a song together. Um, this video is probably pretty long, so I should wrap it up and also get to the sponsor of this video. Yeah, I've been sponsored for this video. 
um, never happened before, cannot relate. Um, so I don't really know how to do it. But this video has been sponsored by Skillshare. You've probably heard it before. Lots of YouTubers have been talking about it for a while. I have a link in the description that you can click to get a trial of Skillshare for two months for free. Zero money, zero dollars and zero cents. You can get a trial if you click my link. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. You can do creative writing, you can do animation, you can do music, music production. So if you, if you wanna watch a video that's much more well put together than this one, have a head over there and learn about how to produce a music. And within each of those categories, there's like a ton of videos where you can take classes on how to do specific things within those categories. For example, in the music category, you can learn how to mix music, you can learn how to master songs, and learn how music producers collaborate with artists. There are currently 7 million creators learning with Skillshare, and so you can join groups to learn with like-minded learners, and you can give and receive feedback on projects, and you can speak with a community who have a similar interest to you. Skillshare is giving away a free two-month unlimited access Access trial to my subscribers who click the link in the description box and after that it's only around ten dollars a month so yeah thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video that's really cool I feel like a, I feel like a, a real youtuber now I've been sponsored yeah if you do take any classes let me know what you've learned and let me know if it's helped you out and yeah I'd love to hear how it's going even though this video is all over the place uh, I hope that it helped a little bit maybe if you're just getting started doing your own production and stuff. I'll see you around. I'm a very sleepy, tired boy. I'm going to edit this big long video right now. Thank you so much. Oh, do you like my squishy wall? My studio is, uh, I think finished now, honestly, it's done. I have my squishy wall and everything. I love it a lot, I think it's nice. I like to touch it and feel it uh, in my spare time. I'll put the song right here in the outro so you can hear the full thing after I finished. I might add some other instruments and stuff, but yeah, uh, I hope you like it. Have a great time. See you later. Hurry up and come back home. Thinking about you all day long. And I can't stop looking at my phone. I just don't want you to be alone. Got a message from your friend. And I felt my stomach in my chest. I don't know how to tell you you're the best. I just don't want you to be gone.